It's time for the Unnamed Swarter Podcast, a podcast so good it doesn't need a name. So without any further ado, here's your host, JD. Take it away, Johnny. Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode 18 of the Unnamed Swotor Podcast. I'm your host, JD, a.k.a. Gaddick Teague, and today's episode will be focused on patch 2.4. That's right, patch 2.4, the long-awaited end of the summer of Swotor has finally arrived, and a lot of people are very excited about it, myself included. So we'll discuss what happened, people's reactions, I've asked all of you to give me your first impressions of the patch 2.4, we'll go over those. And we'll also go over what I think is the worst change from the patch, which is the change to Ultimate Commendations. That's right, Ultimate Commendations can now be used to purchase the level seven, the item level or modification level. We need to we need to standardize this by where item level is one thing, modification level is another. We should just mash them into two. Item level should be the modification level. So. Modification level 78 gear can now be purchased with ultimate comms. Terrible change in my opinion, but we'll get into that further. We'll talk about the arenas, the new operations. Everyone seems to be raving about all of the great stuff that they've added. This seems to be a blockbuster patch, and I'm very happy to, to report on that because, I'll be honest, I was a little worried going into the patch about a month ago, but my, my fears have been in vain, obviously. Good on Bioware with releasing a great patch, and now what the hell will be coming in patch 2.5. With all that being said, let's force sleep right in. Red 2, I've got a topic coming in hot, requesting clearance to engage. Lock as foils and attack positions. You are cleared to discuss. So the biggest and probably most surprising change for me in the patch 2.4 notes was the fact that Operations gear, level 78, which is the newest tier, the highest tier of gear available in the game, will now be available for purchase with Ultimate Commendations. This was not the case before, previously Ultimate Commendations can only be used for level 72 gear, but they've decided to up it to the highest level of gear. Now yes, these are not the tier pieces, the actual set pieces that have the set bonuses for each class. You cannot purchase those, you need the tokens from doing the operations for those. But you can purchase the statted gear up to a level. Also, this gear is not the best itemized. They've said that before, they've done that on purpose. It has a lot of alacrity on it, lots of crit, not necessarily a ton of power, a ton of surge, a ton of main stat, a lot of it has high endurance. So, not necessarily stuff that you want to be getting on your character. Still, it's level 78 gear, the highest tier of the game right now. And I must commend Bioware first for sticking to their guns and keeping the tier, the step ladder of operations as we talked about before, the nice house, the sandwich of operations intact. Your story modes are still all the same level giving the same gear and I think that's a great thing. The new Dread Palace and Dread Fortress reward level 69 and 72 gear as it's been doing beforehand. It's it's all the same difficulty, and that's great. But, in doing that, I have no f***ing clue why they would decide to make Ultimate Commendations purchase 78 gear. That just... It, it utterly boggles my mind why they would send such mixed messages on something so easy, and they came so close to doing it right. What the f***? are they doing? This makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. Story mode operations are balanced around 69 and 72 gear. That's how they're designed and balanced for the average player. The average player can go in there into every story mode and down those bosses. They're not that difficult and they're there for you to see the content. One of the big things that people say when WoW did this. WoW is probably the biggest MMO and probably one of the first that did this real stepping down of commendations. Is that they say that, well players need to see the content that we worked so long and hard on. We want them to be able to experience what we've got. And yes, I agree with them. There's a lot of time and effort that went into designing the new bosses, the new areas, that that takes a lot of time and effort. The new voiceovers, that takes time, that's expensive. It's it's great that 
they want their players to see that and as many players as they can get to see that and that's the purpose of story mode it's awesome you don't need to reward players with the super highest level of gear that you can get for doing story mode your base level of gear that just doesn't make sense in gaming and that's not something that I feel should be harbored or should be endorsed by games and I don't understand more and more games are doing it and it really pisses me off because that's not how games started and how I started playing games and when I started playing games you had to earn that highest level of gear or item you had to earn seeing the final boss you had to earn getting to that final cutscene and I feel like MMOs are just forgetting that and just going with this new everyone should get everything all the time kind of philosophy or everyone should be easily able to obtain everything all the time. You can just run weeks of, of four man content and get the highest level of operation gear and that makes no sense to me. And one thing that I commonly hear is, well, there are people out there who, who only care about gear progression and really want to progress their character, and you're not catering to those people if you don't let them purchase the new gear with ultimate comms, comms that are available to them. And to you, I say, that's a terrible defense, because if there are swaths of people out there who only care about gear progression, then why would they still have been playing the game that hasn't had a new tier of gear since April? It doesn't make sense. Those players would have quit the game a long time ago, and you're saying they're coming back just to get their new tier of gear, and then leaving? No, they're coming back to see the new content, and that's what I don't get. Players play the game for the content, and the gear is the reward for that content. It goes both ways. You need to have both things in a good balance. You look at a game like Guild Wars, and the reason I think Guild Wars failed is because they, they thought that you could go with great content and no progression. They thought that the content was the king. And while content is important, so is progression. But you need to have them linked in such a way, and by where it looks like they were on the track to do that. They understand that. That's why you have the stepping stone of hard modes. That's why you go from hard mode SNV and TFB into the next tier if they did it right. You know, you get your 72s and your set bonuses in hard mode SNV and TFB, and then you go into your Dread Palace and Dread Fortress to get your 78s in hard mode. And that's perfect and how it should stay, but it they just decided not to go that route for some reason because they want to cater to people that want new gear? No, you want to cater to people who want new gear and new content because those are the players who are playing the game. If all players want is new gear, then those players are just going to quit as soon as they get all the gear they want and just leave. So why put in any system to make it incredibly easy for them to get that gear anyway? Getting ultimate comms is not difficult. You run a bunch of story modes. There are so many daily and weekly quests out there now. You'll be able to get a full set in a couple weeks if you're just doing your weeklies all the time. Your daily heroics and... Uh, it's so frustrating and I... Ah, uh, makes me angry. The other thing that, that people forget is the point of the commendation system. Just think about it. Why is the commendation system there? Commendations are there so that every time you do a boss, even if something doesn't drop, you don't feel gypped. You feel like you got something out of the boss, even though something for you didn't drop. Someone else got the loot. It's supposed to be a consolation prize. It's not supposed to be the grand prize. Right now, if you're going into a story mode Dread Palace or Dread Fortress, you shouldn't really care about the 69 gear. You should care more about your comms because your comms are a piece of that 69 gear. If you're going into a story mode and you don't get the 69, let's say you're a fresh, let's, let's look at this from a couple different perspectives. Let's say you're a fresh 55 and you're going into operations for the first time. You could use that 69 gear, that 72 gear that drops. You could definitely use that. But if you don't get it, you're actually getting a better prize in the ultimate comms. You're guaranteed getting a better prize in the ultimate comms that you'll be able to use for 78 level gear. And then on the on the flip side, if you're a fully geared person that really wants to optimize your your gear set, if you're a really hardcore ops person, then as long as there is some best in slot 78 modification or enhancement available for purchase, which I can almost guarantee you there is, I haven't checked all of them yet, but I know there was last time you can get the best in slot mod in the boots for smugglers, I know that. So those people are pretty much should be going through story modes and just blasting through them. Either doing that in a group 
or just doing that and making it the whole operation trivial for the whole group. And the point of operations, and even in story mode, the operations aren't roll your face easy, that you have to do the mechanics. They're centered around a certain level of gear, and the mechanics aren't as complex, but there are mechanics which have to be done in story mode, and if you don't do those mechanics in the targeted level of gear, then you're going to fail. And that's good, it actually trains you to level up in your your operation skill. It'll, it trains you for hard modes, it gets you ready. They do a good job of getting you ready for hard modes. And I know a lot of people who probably couldn't ever do a hard mode in another game who are able to do them because they've kind of learned through the story mode system that this game has, which is great. But if you have those really hardcore people that want to get the best level of gear, they can, they'll just end up going into your pug and trivializing a lot of things. If you have a super high gear tank in your story mode, it trivializes a lot of mechanics, which is not the intended point of the system. The point of the system is to get a bunch of people of like level gear and skill doing something quick and fun. And you know, if they want to get someone in there who super overgears the content, you know, that's fine, but you shouldn't be encouraging that because that's pretty much what the ultimate comms are doing. It just boggles my mind how games still do this. Think about your old RPGs, your, your NES, your Super NES, your PlayStation, your games now even have a system in your RPGs where if you go to your, if you get past your opening town, you level up, say you're halfway through the game, three quarters of the way through the game, and you go back to that first area, you're going to be fighting those super weak things, one-shotting them over and over and over, but you'll be getting rewards comparable to that, and they won't be worth anything to you. But this new system is saying, like, if you just level up, you can go back to your starter town, and they'll be dropping new epic level gear. It's awesome. Don't worry about it. It just loses sight of the whole point of gear and content, and uh, it just, I just don't understand why the, and the, the whole thing is, it's also a complete mixed message. It's saying, yes, we want you to do story modes all in the same tier, and then work your way up through hard modes, but then we also want you to just get the best level of gear from your story modes, and then be able to jump right into hard mode. Why? Do you know? It's like they're trying to not obsolete their content. It wants to make story mode, not story mode, hard mode, scum and villainy, and TFB still doable and give you a reason to do them, which is a good thing. They shouldn't be taking out those things because those are great operations and there are tons of people out there who have never seen scum and villainy and TFB hard mode and they should try that. They're able to try out the new stuff in story mode if they want, but if they want to get to the hard mode stuff, they should be able to work their way up through the hard modes. And that way they could also really ramp the difficulty up as you go up in tiers. They can make the next tier harder than this tier. And it's a good thing that they're trying to do that, but they're also circumventing it by sending this mis mixed message of, well, you could just use ultimate comms to get the best stuff, so don't even worry about it. Just use ultimate comms, and you'll be right into hard mode, dread palace, or dread fortress. So, no worries about that. Another thing that people say is, well, it's th really there for the players who have lots of alts, and they want to get their alt in, or you have a guild that really wants to get you, or... Or you have a guild with a new player who's a fresh 55 that really want to get up there so you can do Dread Fortress, Dread Palace with them. But the way the system works now, you can just run through the old hard modes and gear them up and be ready to do the new hard modes, the Dread Palace and Dread Fortress, with a single run through TFB and SNV. And you can do that in a, one night. It's, it's that easy if you're in the right gear and you know what you're doing. So... I don't understand that, and for alts, you can just mail alt gear right through the legacy system. That's a great thing this game has done. You can say, well, my sniper got nerfed, I'm not, not saying that they did, but just hypothetical, I can't play this class anymore, they're not up to snuff, so I'm going to level this other class, and if I do that and get up to max level, I'm kind of screwed because I'm going to be far behind everyone else, but no, you can just send gear over from the legacy system in legacy gear so just nothing here makes sense to me this isn't a smart decision by bioware and you can tell me otherwise if you feel that way but i just think you're wrong and i think a lot of this stems from the fact that in other games hard modes required you to spend 
you know, hours and hours trying things out, and you had to be super hardcore, and only the best of the best could do hard modes. But it's not like that in this game. The hard modes in this game are accessible. I've heard of tons, of, like I've said, I've heard of tons of players who had never touched a hard mode in other games, getting in there and actually finding them pretty fun and challenging, and you know, a nice step up and change from the story modes. And that's great, and I think they should continue to harbor that. Really tell players, hey, hard modes are not that bad, just try it out, you'll, you'll find you'll like them. Not, hey, we know you're not going to be able to do hard modes, so we're just going to give you the hard mode gear, because that's going to disincentivize players from trying hard mode who wouldn't have necessarily tried it otherwise. If you're in a guild that only does story mode operations, try one night just hard mode TFB. If you have done story mode TFB a thousand times, and you've done story mode SNV a thousand times, just try doing hard mode SNV or hard mode TFB. I guarantee you, you can do the Writhing Horror in, in hard mode. I guarantee you, you can do Dash Road and Titan 6 in, in hard mode. They're not that difficult. And by giving players this route around them, it's kind of like saying, you can never do this, so we're just going to reward you anyway. And if that was me, I would almost feel like that's a condescending way of Bioware saying, you suck, so we're just going to give you this nice shiny gift. Because we know you'd never be able to get it on your own. You'd never be able to accomplish hard modes on your own. So we're just going to make it super easy here, just have it. And that's just a terrible philosophy to have, in my opinion. This is a terrible idea, and I really hope that they... They changed their mind on this going forward, and that we'll never see another jump up of tier. Commendations are not that bad. The final thing that I hear a ton is, well, the commendation system is complex and people don't understand it. That's so stupid. You know, in the bag, there's tooltips for everything, telling you where you get the gear, what it's spent on. It's great. It's not like WoW, where you didn't really understand where justice points came from or whatever points came from. It's simple. You just look there. And for those players who might not know that, and you're saying, oh, well, the average MMO is... MMOer is too stupid to know to look for the tooltips. Well, how about the reputation system? That's not super easy. There's tons of complex systems in the game that not everyone, or the average MMOer, as you'd say, would understand. Well, tough luck. Some stuff in MMOs isn't simple, and there are tons of resources out there for players to look. All the time, even with the current system, I see people saying, well, um, I just don't get the gearing system, can you explain it to me? Pretty much once a week in, on the Swotor subreddit, I see posts of explain to me like I'm 5 and game gearing. P no matter what you do, players are still not going to get the system. There's no harm in putting in new commendations. It's easy to explain. You can even rename them if you want. Tier 1 commendations, tier 2 commendations, tier 3 commendations. Simple, easy. And it, ah, uh, it's just, ah, uh, so frustrating. Ah. Uh, I really hope that... This isn't a sign of future things to come. I think Bioware... I hope Bioware understands that by doing this, they're they're not doing... I, I don't even know what they're trying to do with this. It doesn't make sense. At all. So, I mean, if Bioware, if you want to explain to me why you're doing this, I, I might even... I'm going to the community canteen next weekend. I'm thinking about making this my question about why they decided to make the top level operations gear purchasable with ultimate comms while simultaneously putting all the story modes on the same level. That might be my question next week. Maybe they can explain to me there if they want to come on the show or send me an email. I'd love to hear from them and I would love to discuss their their response on the show if anyone li listens to this. I doubt that, but who knows? You never know. So that's really where I'm at. I. I'm just frustrated with this. I, I think I've said frustrated five times, so drink for each time I said frustrated. Go back in time, re-listen to this, and get yourself a drink, and drink every time I say frustrated. It's just, I'm really passionate about this. I've said before that one of the biggest reasons I quit WoW was the fact that they kept A, nerfing content, which I'm happy to see that they did not do that in the hard modes or nightmare modes. That's a great thing that they've kept intact, and I'm very glad for that and the fact that they kept making gear levels trivial if you really want to say that there are people out there who only care about gear progression and they really need the gear to 
make themselves have any, you know, MMO self-worth? Well, how about the other side of the coin, the players that really worked hard for their gear and really strained and put in a ton of time to get their Keldra in gear? Now you're saying anyone who does a four-man heroic can just get better gear? That's because that's basically what you're saying with this. So I can't see the people who are in favor of just giving out free gear don't see the flip side of the coin about how that devalues everyone else's gear who's worked hard for it. I think you see where I'm at right now. Feel free to let me know what you think. At GT on Twitter. GattaTeague.CRR at gmail.com. Send me your reactions to this. Maybe we'll discuss it next week. Maybe not. We'll see. And I think we'll take a break here because I'm a little drained from that discussion. I won't lie. I will come back after the break and discuss other reactions to patch 2.4 and be a little bit more positive because I think other things in this patch are absolutely excellent. So stick around and I will discuss that in about 30 seconds. Plenty of other stuff in patch 2.4 to get excited for. I'm very excited and very happy with patch 2.4. Other than the bugs, which can be expected with any update and any MMO, doesn't matter what you're playing. If it's an MMO, it's fast development time, things are going out on the fly, there's going to be some bugs. So, those things hopefully will be worked out, like the 8v4 matchups or the 5v4 matchups at arenas. It's kind of funny, but. Hopefully they'll get ironed out. I know the GTN had some problems, but on the flip side, the GTN changes are probably my favorite thing and favorite convenience option to add to the game so far. I know it's helped me make a lot more money in this time where augment sales have gone through the roof because there's a new set of gear out. I was able to make a lot more money a lot more easy, easily because of the GTN changes. You can now list things and it'll remember your unit price and things like that. It remembers the price you last set on an item if you put multiple up. So awesome stuff there. So happy to see that in there. The arenas. I put out a tweet asking people what they thought of the, re the arenas, if they liked them. Universally I think people said they liked them. I know people have some kind of grudge. Well, they probably rightfully have a grudge against the removal of 8v8s ranked and the addition of 4v4, but putting that aside, I think people are really receptive to the 4v4 style that they put in. I think they really like the arenas, I think the maps are good, I think people are happy with that. One of the complaints that I've seen is the fact that people can't just queue for arenas. And while I understand going forward in the far future why you might not want to do that, splitting the community in such a way. I think maybe for the first week or two they should have put in a system where you can just queue for their arenas so people can see the new stuff and really get used to playing it and then kind of mix it back into the 8v8s but that's not the route they went but regardless I think people are, are really enjoying the arenas. A lot of different classes I think are getting in there and really playing Fairly and roughly equally, I know some things like the Operative Healer, Scoundrel Healer, definitely need to be toned down, but the past Community Q&A kind of shed some light on that, and I think we'll be seeing th something in patch 2.5 to the, the extent of a nerf to the Scoundrel Healer for PvP, which is probably a good thing. The Dread Fortress and Dread Palace, I think, have been getting rave reviews, again, other than the bugs. I think people are really enjoying that place, it looks cool, it's different, and it's interesting, new boss mechanics, all good stuff. One of the things that I was thinking about with the Dread Fortress and Dread Palace is now that we do have the end of the Dread Masters as, well, is that a spoiler? I don't think that's really a spoiler. I think we all know that in the end you kill the Dread Masters. Or do we? Oh. But now that we have the Dreadmasters gone from the 
current Endgame storyline, where are we going to go, and who's going to be the next bad guy? I think that's probably a very intriguing question that we may see in 2.5, but maybe we won't see until 2.6, really, the evolution of the next storyline. What I hopefully will see is a change, because right now the end, the end game storyline is very sci not sci-fi, it's very fantasy-like. You have a group of rogue mages that got out and broke away from the bad faction and now are terrorizing everyone. They have this doomsday plan. That's kind of, that may be extended universe kind of SWOTOR, but it's not really Star Wars Star Wars to me. I wish that the next bad guy, and I hope that the next bad guy is more of a sci-fi style bad guy, a Darth Malgus character where it's more Star Warsy and less about the magic and lightning and things of that nature. More of just the brooding evil character with an army of, of star fighters and a fleet and troopers at his side. I think that would be a nice change of pace from the more uh, fantasy style, force focused type of, of bad guy. I know a lot of people are hoping to see that Hotball map that was teased at in the patch 2.4 dev blog from Swotor Miner. He posted today, actually, this morning, that it looks like that map is coming along on Quest, so hopefully we'll see that in patch 2.5. I can almost guarantee that'll be a patch 2.5 thing. Like I guessed last week how it would be Hotball map plus Rise of the Rackle event in patch 2.5 plus all the class balances. I, I, I can I put a lot of money down to say that the Quest Hotball map will be coming in patch 2.5. And you know, I'm forgetting the, the planet of Oricon, which is probably the, I don't know, most central part of the patch 2.4, the most central to the story, I guess. Oricon is a great planet. I've said this when it was on the PTS, and it's even better, I guess, now that I've done it on a couple different characters in the live game because now my progress actually matters and my dialogue choices actually mean something to me. The Oricon storyline is very well done. I think it's very varied depending on what type of character you have. I think the storyline kind of shifts a little bit if you're a force user, if you're not a force user. You're just still doing the same basic things, but the dialogue choices are varied enough that I feel happy with it. I think this is the pinnacle of what a basic patch storyline, story content should be in patches. Every other patch, maybe, if we have something Oricon style and size, would be amazing. I would love to play through something like Oricon every, like, three, three or four months. I think that would be excellent. And it's a really quality story. I think it makes you feel engaged in the bad guy. It really gets you up to speed if you haven't been paying attention as to what's going on, who you're fighting, why you're fighting them. And I like how they've tied the heroic in at the end to make you feel like you still have to do something to stop them. And I like how it finally ties into the idea of the operation where you actually go in and kill the Dreadmasters. I'm sure a lot of people dislike the fact that Oricon is a PvP area. I know a lot of people hate World PvP, and that's why they play on a PvE server, but if they don't, I know there's still some people on a PvP server that don't like World PvP. I personally don't like P World PvP, but I play on a PvP server. Because I think it keeps things interesting, a little flavor to the world, makes things not necessarily only you have to fight the, the computer. You're fighting against the bad guys, and they can come out anywhere, anytime, in any number. That helps keep things interesting to me, and I got ganked quite a few times while running the Oricon storyline, but you know, that's not a bad thing. I think it's fun to have an area like that. You can call out your guildies and help out with your daily quests on there, I like that. I think they've done a good job with CZ198 and Oricon in combination to make a really solid storyline. I mean, not story. I think they've done a great job with CZ198 and Oricon making a great couple of PvP areas that could spark world PvP organically, which is really what they should be striving to do. You have both sides fighting for the same resources for the same quests, and that's that's how you get good world PvP versus old Illum world PvP, which I know some people, people like, but I think that's the dumbest form of world PvP there is. Also added were the wide array of changes to the Vanguard or Power Tech DPS specifically, 
I've heard good things. I think a lot of people are very happy with these changes. They've done a very good job of getting them back to where they should be. After they were nerfed from their rail shotting turret style of I kill everything in PvP mode. So I think they've done a good job with that. I think power t if you've been putting your power tech or your vanguard on the shelf for a while because they got nerfed so hard, I think you should break them out and try them out again. They fixed Treak, which is really cool. You can now get more conversations, which is nice. I know a lot of people were unhappy with how her story was done. I did a whole podcast on that. How I don't think she was utilized to her fullest, but hopefully adding new conversations really fleshes her out a little bit more, gives her some more backstory and a little bit more motivation. So all in all, I think patch 2.4 was a great patch content-wise. Obviously, I was still really unhappy, and I'm still on edge about how they handled the ultimate commendations, but it's not the worst thing in the world, I guess. They could have just nerfed hard mode and nightmare mode and brought the hard mode down to the level of the current tier of hard modes and the former tier of har tier 1, tier 2, to the level of TFB and Scum and Villainy, and they could have nerfed those down to story mode level. I'm glad they didn't do that, but their mixed messages are a little upsetting. I don't like that. One final thing that I want to talk about that I really think is a terrible move that I think could be a slippery slope to things to come is the addition of the Adrenals, the Warzone Adrenals, and Med Packs to the cartel market. If you haven't heard, you can now buy a pack containing 10 of the Warzone Adrenals and Warzone Med Packs for 200 cartel coins. You might be saying, what a ripoff, those things are so cheap, but honestly, this is another example of buy or selling an in-game item that should be done, that should be handled by some in-game means. You can craft them, I know they're expensive to craft, but that's not the problem. To me, this is like a a space weapon and space armor debacle all over again. They sold the space armor and the space weapons, the tier 7, the level 7, whatever you want to call them, on the GTN. A lot of people didn't like that at all. They thought it was buying power, it was really messing up the economy. And it did. I mean, a lot of people saved up a lot of the space comms so they could craft that tier 7 stuff, sell it for money. And a lot of people felt like they were cheating the system by just selling it on the GTN. Things that were basically required to do the hard mode space missions. So, this to me is a light version of that. It's not as egregious because it is basically such a ripoff, but it's scary the things that they could do going forward. I mean, the next step, what if they started selling just regular adrenals and med packs and stims on the, on the cartel market? Saying they're not necessarily buying power because you can get them in-game and craft them. I think that would be a really bad move, and it kind of scares me to see this. So that's why I'm going to really react negatively to this. I have on the forums. I've been very uh, outspoken about how much I dislike this on the forums because of where I could see it leading. I think we need to stand together and show Bioware that we don't want in-game items like this sold. Sell your cosmetics, sell your gear sets, sell your mounts, your packs, your XP boosts, but don't sell in-game stuff like stims and buffs and just keep stay away from that because that's where we can get into that gray area and start crossing the line into pay to win. And while this isn't pay to win in the loose sense in which I like to describe it, it doesn't sell you something that you couldn't get very easily in game on your own. It's not like you're you're buying a ton of. It's not like you're buying millions of credits worth of stuff. You're buying very small amounts of credits of stuff. But in the very technical sense, this is essentially pay to. You're buying a required piece of gear because the med packs and adrenals are basically required if you're going to do any form of PvP. You can do it without them, but you're putting yourself at a disadvantage not having them. So you're putting something that is basically required on the GTN that you need to spend cartel coins on. I, I don't like that as a system. So hopefully this is the last PC of anything like this, any consumable of this type on the GTN. And we want to deal with this again. So I think that'll do it for this episode. We will go ahead and move on to the wall of crazy. What? That's impossible even for a computer! It's not impossible. I used to bullseye womp rats in my T16 back home. They're not much bigger than two meters. 
And my wall of crazy topic this week comes from uh, I kind of forgot to write down who it comes from. So if it was you, I apologize. Please let me know with my email, Twitter, or however you let me know the first time. I will be sure to credit you next time. I apologize for this, but I didn't write it down and I can't seem to find where it came from. But they suggested that there should be arenas that are objective-based, which is something I said while it was on the PTS. I think an objective-based arena would be a lot more interesting and get a lot more people invested in them because the kill, everyone kill something playstyle doesn't really fit everyone. It's not a one-size-fit-all thing, especially for people who have been playing an objective style of 8v8 for a long time now. I think objective 4v4 arenas, objective-based 4v4 arenas would be awesome. Something like Capture the Flag, something like a Hutball. Imagine like a Griffball style if you played Halo at all. Griffball style arena would be awesome, I think. It'd be really interesting and a lot of fun to play. I think I would even play that. I don't have any interest in playing arenas for real, but I think a lot of people would have an interest in them, myself included, if there were something fun like that mixed in there. I think there should be more traps in the arenas as well because I think they get a little stale if players are just wailing on each other for a while. I think setting up a perfect push into a fire or a pit is uh, an interesting play style that I think should be looked into more for the arenas just to make them more varied and different, not the same burn down the healer, hard switch to this target, hard switch to that target, uh, CC this guy, uh, lift this guy, etc, etc. So. I think that would be really interesting, so thank you whoever gave me that idea. Again, I apologize that I'm not letting you know who it is right now, but I will in the future, so please let me know. I also want to make a quick shout out to the Sword War Escape podcast, SEPC, is a great new Star Wars The Old Republic podcast. Find them on iTunes, I'll link to them in the show notes, they're great. They're very mellow and relaxing, I enjoy listening to them. When I just want to chill out, get my dailies done, or while I'm at work, really zoning out. So, great podcast to listen to. They gave me a shout out, giving them a shout out right back because they do great work. Love to see new podcasts cropping up. I think the sport community has definitely increased in popularity the past couple of months, and I think Patch 2.4 will only further increase the number of people playing Star Wars The Old Republic and also lead to more people listening to podcasts like this one and the Escape podcast. Also, the Utina cast probably shouted me out about nine times in the past episode, so I need to shout out back to them, the Utina cast. Amazing work, guys. Thanks for repping me so hard in your shows, uh, really helping me out by retweeting me and, you know, calling me out on the show. Thank you so much. Love your show. You're the preeminent Swotor podcast, in my opinion. So, now they got, they got that out of the way, also want to remind you that on November 2nd, I will be doing, I will be participating in the Extra Life Charity event. 25 hours of gaming time starting November 2nd uh, at 2 at 2 a.m.? No, not at 2 a.m. At 8 a.m. I will have monsters and Red Bull and caffeine and lots of fast food probably because I will be playing 25 hours of Star Wars related content for you to watch all for the Extra Life Charity Please, I will link in the show notes where you can donate money to the children's hospitals that are supported by the Extra Life Charity event. Anything you can give would be much appreciated. And you'll be able to watch me probably make a fool out of myself in my drunken haze of tiredness. So, everyone wins with this event. The Ace Wotor player on the Swotor subreddit uh, really set up a team and really got me involved with this, with the Tenacious Jawas team that we set up, so check it out, please. Anything you give is great. Next week, we will be discussing more of Patch 2.4, what evolves and what comes of the bugs that have been in the game. We'll see what's gone, what's still there, how people feel about the new hard modes. We'll see if they're difficult enough. I know my guild is already 4 or 5 in the palace, I think. I was not playing a lot this week, very busy, but Sunday, Monday and Sunday I will get a chance to see them myself, so I'll report back on what I feel about those. We'll see how the meta is shaping up for the PvP arenas, and maybe I'll get a guest on because next week might be a slower show than this one because we had so much to talk about this week, 
So, if you have anything you'd like to see me talk about, if you have an idea for a topic you'd like covered in the show, feel free to email me. You know you can always get me at galacteague.crr at gmail.com, or you can tweet me at gteague if it's just like a quick little thing you want me to get out there. I'm always asking for listener call-ins. I'd love to add more call-ins to the show if you'd like to record a quick 10-second clip, 15-second clip of you asking a question or discuss your opinions on anything I talked about in this show, anything I've talked about in past shows, or anything you'd like to see me talk about in the future. Just record it. you got a smartphone, some kind of recording device. You probably have a mic if you're playing an MMO, so just record it, send it to me by email, and I will get it in the show, and we'll discuss it if it's a good topic. So if you're new to the game... I feel like I have a million things to talk about at the end of this episode. If you're new to the game or think you're resubscribing, I provide my refer friend link in the show notes. So if you like a little added incentive to get back into the game, feel free to use it. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Unnamed Sword War Podcast. This is JD, signing off.